Welcome and thank you for joining us on Birth Mother Matters in Adoption with Kelly Rourke Scary and me, Ron Rains, where we delve into the issues of adoption from every angle of the adoption triad. Do what's best for your kid and for yourself because if you can't take care of yourself, you're definitely not going to be able to take care of that kid and that's not fair. And I know that my daughter will be well taken care of with them. Don't have an abortion. Give this child a chance. All I could think about was needing to save my son. My name is Kelly Rourke Scary. I am the executive director, president, and co-founder of Building Arizona Families Adoption Agency, the Donna K. Evans Foundation, and creator of the You Before Me campaign. I have a bachelor's degree in family studies and human development and a master's degree in education with an emphasis in school counseling. I was adopted at the age of three days, born to a teen birth mother, raised in a closed adoption and reunited with my birth mother in 2007. I have worked in the adoption field for over 15 years. And I'm Ron Raines. I've worked in radio since 1999. I was the co-host of two successful morning shows in Prescott, Arizona. Now I work for my wife, who's an adoption attorney, and I'm able to combine these two great passions and share them on this podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, make sure to rate and review us on whatever platform you use to listen to us and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Look for AZ Adopt Podcast. Arizona is in the news again. Uh, This time it is regarding the new abortion bill that has passed that uh, Arizona Governor Doug Ducey signed this past Tuesday. So he just signed a sweeping anti-abortion bill that bans the procedure if a woman is seeking it solely because the fetus has a genetic abnormality such as Down syndrome. Doctors who perform an abortion solely because the child has a survivable genetic issue can face felony charges. The proposal also contains a raft of other provisions sought by abortion opponents. This is amazing that this has passed. I think this gives me confidence that we are still moving in the right direction in saving babies' lives. I think that I was personally surprised when it passed because I didn't know that we would have enough stamina, you know, to get something like this to go through. So again, I'm, I'm personally, my opinion, you know, not building Arizona families as an agency or anybody else. My sole opinion is I'm I'm very happy and very grateful that this has gone through. I'm hoping that this can be somewhat of a cornerstone for other states to step up to the plate and follow through very much like the heartbeat law is now in so many states. And I know another state just joined the heartbeat law, uh, signed it into effect as well. Now, what would you say to those who would say that this is kind of, going at it from the wrong perspective, because if there's an exception to abortions, it should be this. And I'm not saying that for myself. I'm saying I've heard that argument and I want to know your response to it. Okay. Can you break that down? So I make sure that I answer exactly what you're asking. Okay. Saying that if a birth mother knows that her child is going to have Down syndrome, syndrome, for instance, and that being an excusable reason to have an abortion and this law is prohibiting that. Now, what would you respond with? I think right now as a country, we're so focused on who is being discriminated against. And I think that because of that, this law is um, been gifted to those who believe in the sanctity of life because we as a state now, hopefully one day a nation, are not discriminating against children that have Down syndrome, the children that have special needs. We're not saying that these children don't deserve the same chance at life as somebody who doesn't have this. So I think that I would state that I'm so grateful that this is no longer a choice that a pregnant woman would have to make There is always adoption if you choose not to parent or parenting is not an option. So it's not as if, you know, if you're pregnant with a child and the child has Down syndrome, it's not as if you are forced to parent that child. There is another option. Uh 
And so I think that some women may be very relieved that that's off the table, that they no longer have to look at that. I know that when I was uh, pregnant with my youngest child, and when I found out that I was pregnant, I was 37. And when I went to the doctor, the first thing he asked me was, what if the baby has Down syndrome? Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand his question. And so I looked at them and said, what, what do you mean? Like, that will be very unfortunate. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know the response he was looking for. And even having had worked in the adoption world for so long, I still was kind of stumbling around thinking, what, what exactly are you asking me? And right. he, do you want to continue the pregnancy? And I thought, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, regardless of whether or not this child has Down syndrome, this is still, you know, at the time I didn't know, but this is still my son. This isn't, this doesn't change anything. And I think that as a nation, if we are looking at, you know, children with Down syndrome as equals, which they are, mm -hmm. we can't discriminate against them and say, oh, we can go ahead and abort if there is Down syndrome and make that a choice. Because again, that is blatant discrimination. Well, to me, it, it, it shows that the soul of the country is at peril. If people use that as an argument, it reeks to me of the eugenics movements of the early 1900s, where if you were considered lesser than, we could just get rid of you. And it shouldn't change anything that the child hasn't been born yet. You know, it just, yeah, so I agree with you 100%. I just wanted your argument, if somebody was to come to you and say, well, this should be a reasonable exception. And I disagree wholeheartedly with I'm right. I, I think in a lot of ways, maybe secretly in a, you know, in a pregnant woman's heart or maybe her partner's heart to not have that be on the table, mm -hmm. that that's not something that they have to make a decision on. Because I, I, you know, I have talked with women who have, um, have had a child that they're carrying that has tested positive for Down syndrome. And that's a heartbreaking diagnosis, but it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And like, like they stated um, in the law of the past, it's not a life-threatening in and of itself, a life-threatening condition. And so does it mean that you or your child may have more challenges in life? Sure, sure. But is that a reason to terminate and end a life before it even has a chance to begin? In my opinion, no. And again, I want to preface this as we will throughout this podcast, that this is my sole opinion. This is not on behalf of an agency or anything else. This is my personal opinion. And I, I really want to get this out on the table and, and discuss it because I think it's important for people who are on the fence about certain things to be able to hear why, you know, mm -hmm. why, why, why. A question that is often asked of me when people do talk about Down syndrome is, do families want to adopt children with special needs? As an example, Down syndrome. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. 100%. What's so interesting about, about that question, you know, are there families that want to adopt a child with special needs as an example, Down syndrome? And absolutely there is, you know, we have families that feel that they are equipped and they would be a benefit to a child that has special needs. Mm -hmm. And I love that philosophy and approach because it's not that they're saving a child. It's almost that the child is saving them because they have something to offer. And, you know, I've seen families where, you know, one of the two parents may be deaf and they want to adopt a deaf child. So I was, as I was preparing for the podcast today, there was an article published in April of 2007 of characteristics and perspectives of families waiting to adopt a child with Down syndrome. And this was in the genetics of medicine um, in their, one of their journals. And so the purpose of the study was to obtain the information on the characteristics and perspectives of families interested in adopting children with Down syndrome. So from 199 mailed surveys, there were 72 respondents, 36.2% uh, of whom who had previously adopted a child with Down syndrome. 48% learned of the possibility of, a ch of adopting a child with Down syndrome through the internet. And the primary reasons for considering adoption were that prospective adoptive families were equipped with the necessary resources and had previous positive experiences with individuals who have Down syndrome. And 
I think that this is absolutely fascinating because I think we are underestimating the desire, the drive, and the caring of so many people who would want to parent and maybe even specifically select a child that had Down syndrome. You know, we have for years and years and years and years and years oh. adopted internationally as a, as a nation from China. Many of the children from China have been classified as having some special need or another. And so in my mind, why would it be any different adopting a child in the United States with a special need? Why would, you know what I mean? That it, it should be parallel. It should be the same. So I think that this will give a lot of people an opportunity to really show, at least now in Arizona, really show other states, yes, there is a need and there is a desire and people want to become parents. And if the child has special needs, the child has special needs. It's not a reason for that child to be non-adoptable. I agree. And I also think it underestimates us as people ourselves. If somebody was to find out that their child that was going to be born was going to be born with Down syndrome or any other thing, and they decided not to place the child for adoption, I also think we're underestimating our ability to cope with hardships in life. I know it's not the same, but I kind of look at myself in a similar way. I was born with eyesight problems that you know, are just very difficult to overcome. And I wonder, had my mom been given the option at that time or, you know, even thought about it? Because she didn't know until after I was born, obviously. But if she had known, would she have continued with this? And I'm glad she did. You know, I'm glad that I'm here. And I know that it was difficult for her. And I'm sure at the time she was probably like, I don't have the tools or, you know, the means to deal with a child that's not quote unquote normal. But in my opinion, she did a fantastic job. She stepped up to the plate and I think people can step up to the plate. I of course look at myself and think, I don't know if I could have raised a child with Down syndrome. But if presented with that option, you know, you hopefully will step up to the plate and get better as a human being and rise to the challenge. Sure. And again, it, it won't be for everybody. There will right. be uh, birth parents that say, you know what, I know that I can't provide the quality of life to, to my child that my child deserves. And so I'm going to place that child with a family that can. And right. I don't think that makes them any less of a person. I think that no. that makes them a hero. I also think that, you know, sometimes, in my opinion, medicine can almost do us a disservice. You know, we don't have a crystal ball for everything. And, you know, if we had testing that would say, okay, you know, this child is going to have autism or this child, you know, will God forbid develop cancer when they're nine, or this child will, you know, at what point are we finding out too much that is then leading us to make decisions that really we're not, in my opinion, supposed to be making. Right. And so I think that, again, that this new law in Arizona is really doing us a service I also think it is 100% in sync with us as a nation trying to do away with discrimination because clearly these babies, you know, they like to call them fetuses, but mm -hmm. these babies, these little ones are being discriminated against. I agree. I think this is again, um, monumental. I'm so proud of Arizona for stepping forward and, and passing this. I think this is going to become a very controversial a law that has passed, I think that it is going to really, you know, rattle some cages. And I'm hoping that we can continue to move forward. Again, promoting adoption and the celebration of all life mm -hmm. is really our goal and always has been our goal, especially in the adoption world. Without abortion, for those that can't parent or choose not to parent, that only creates more adoption opportunities, more families that can become parents, more siblings that can become more siblings. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> so I think that it just gives us so many more opportunities and it's such a gift. It's such a gift. So I think that 
again, moving forward as we, you know, wade in uncharted territories, I think that we as a society really need to look at this for what it is Mm -hmm. and look at the positives. The glass is half full. There's no lemons here. And if there was, we'd still make lemonade. But at the same time, you know, maybe Arizona can stand proud and we can see other states line up behind us to show everybody how much these children are really valued and how much they're wanted and that there are families out there that desperately want a child and would love to have a down syndrome child and would look at that child the very same way they would look at a child that didn't have down syndrome right. and i think the underlying message here is all children are valued and wanted We have a pregnancy crisis hotline available 24-7 by phone or text at 623-695-4112, or you can reach us on our toll-free number at 1-800-340-9665. We can make an immediate appointment with you to get you to a safe place, provide food and clothing, and help you get started on creating an Arizona adoption plan, or just give you more information. Check out our blogs on our website at azpregnancyhelp.com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter by looking for AZ Adopt Podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, make sure to rate and review us on whatever platform you use to listen to us. Birth Mother Matters and Adoption was written and produced by Kelly Rourke Scary and edited by me. Thanks go out to Grapes for letting us use their song, I Don't Know, as our theme song. Join us next time on Birth Mother Matters and Adoption. For Kelly Rourke Scary, I'm Ron Raines, and we'll see you then. 